Hey, what is up you guys? I am out grouse hunting today and I wanted to share with you five tips to find more grouse. Let's get into it. Tip number one, hunting after a storm. Like many animals, grouse are fairly active uh, the day after a storm. So if you find there's a particularly rainy, windy day, the day after that, if there's any chance it's nice, even remotely, that would be a good day to get out and look for grouse. During a storm, uh, the grouse will often go into thick bushes or under cover and they will hide from the cold and wind and rain. Grouse are particularly skinny creatures and don't store fat well, which means that if they are hunkered down for the day, uh, hiding from a storm, they'll definitely have to come out the next day to feed because grouse need to eat pretty much every day. So if you got a little time off the day after a, a nasty, rainy, windy day, that would be an excellent time to get out and look for some grouse. Tip number two, dusk and dawn. So again, like a lot of animals, grouse are most active at, at dawn and dusk. That doesn't mean you can't find grouse all day. I've seen grouse literally in the middle of a busy highway in the pouring rain in the middle of the afternoon. So you can absolutely find grouse all day. They're just most active at dawn and dusk. Grouse generally like to roost uh, at night in a tree, a conifer tree preferably, or an evergreen tree like a fir. And then they'll come down in the morning to feed. In the afternoon, frequently they'll fly back up to that same tree or one nearby it and roost for the afternoon. And then they'll come back down before dusk and feed some more and again do their dust baths and stuff. Grouse as a general rule will live in one small area their entire lives uh, so they'll like to pick a tree often it's uh, the biggest gnarliest looking tree where they can get high up and feel safe. If you find that roost tree that grouse will likely spend his whole life around that that one tree and you can focus on that at dawn and dusk if you wanna basically stock one single grouse. Dawn and dusk are where the grouse feel most safe. It's not as light out as it is, say like right now at like 3 p.m. To uh, better camouflage themselves from predators like owls and bobcats, and grouse already have great camouflage, they use that, that low light as well as their camouflage as well as the thick understory that they like to live in to hide from predators. So if you can get out at dawn, maybe stop, have lunch during midday or keep hunting, uh, and then hit it again at dusk, you're likely to see more grouse. Tip number three, uh, drumming. So male grouse will drum to claim territory and attract a mate. If you've never heard grouse drumming, you should Google it. It sounds like a lawnmower starting in the middle of the forest. So the male grouse will start their drumming in the spring. And so if you're like me and you spend a lot of time out and about in the woods and you hear some drumming, mark that location on Onyx or Gaia or whatever mapping system that you use and you can come back later because you know that a grouse lives there as grouse generally live in the same area their entire life which is usually only a few acres. The male grouse to perform their drumming will often choose a prominent log something maybe like this or a prominent rock in an area and they'll stand up on it and drum. Sometimes you get to see it. <laughs> Obviously I can't do it, I don't have wings. It looks pretty cool and it sounds totally wild when you're out in the woods. But if you find that spot, mark it down and you can come back later during hunting season because you know that a grouse lives in that area. Similarly, if you're out grouse hunting and you see a grouse, maybe you flush a grouse and you don't end up getting it, mark that area because that grouse lives right there. It's not going to leave that general area for its whole life until it dies of natural causes or more likely a bobcat or 
some type of owl or hawk gets it. So essentially, because grouse live in one small area for their entire lives, if you find a grouse, you can mark that area on your map and come back during hunting season. And unless a predator has got that grouse, there's most definitely a grouse living in that area. Ruffed grouse, which is what we're focused on in today's video, are the most widespread common type of grouse native to North America. There's other types of grouse, of course, blue grouse, dusky grouse, sage sharp-tailed grouse, uh, but today we're focusing on rough grouse, which as a general rule live below an elevation of 2,000 feet. Rough grouse are spread all the way from Maine to Washington to Alaska up into Canada. They have an extremely wide habitat and wide array of food which leads us right into our next tip. Tip number four, habitat. So grouse are a bird of edges. Grouse love the edges of clear cuts, uh, the edge of a forest and a field, a forest and a swamp, the edge of coniferous and deciduous trees, old growth, new growth edge, or something like the edge of a road. Grouse also like to have thick underbrush, which I think I mentioned before helps them hide from predators and escape the elements. Female grouse also use the thick underbrush to make their nests, so grouse are ground nesting birds. They don't make their nests in trees, they lay their eggs on the ground, and laying your eggs in a uh, thick underbrush just makes it harder for the predators to get in and uh, get them, them young. Now what you see behind me here is what I would consider almost a perfect grouse habitat. Let me explain. So behind this initial wall of trees, and it's a little hard to tell through the trees, but you back up in here, there are big conifer trees for the grouse to roost in or fly up into if they feel threatened. Looking at the same wall of trees, you can see here's a fir tree, here's an aspen tree, here's an alder tree, and maple. So there's a really nice mix of deciduous and conifer trees all throughout. You can also see that there is fairly thick underbrush in here. It's hard to see into. So when the grouse fly down from those big roost trees to feed here, they'll feel relatively safe that they can dart back in to the thick underbrush. Now if I had it absolutely my way, that underbrush would be even a little bit thicker. Now moving over, you also have a really nice edge here of the forest and a road. And along this road is tons of food source for the grouse. And we'll get to food in just a minute. So essentially this spot has a really nice mix of trees, safety for the grouse, food, and edges. So I am still in the same spot that I was just describing about habitat to you guys and uh, about 80 feet from where I was just talking to you I just flushed a grouse back into the woods here. Wish I'd got it on camera but this is great grouse habitat burn it into your memory. We'll never find that guy though. I also really like hunting and find a lot of grouse in habitat like this, where there's a uh, wide range of plants and different species, uh, as well as a super thick understory. Literally right after showing you guys that spot, I found this grouse right here. And tip number five is gonna be food. So in the summertime, grouse will eat fruits, plants, insects, berries, buds, um, they'll even eat like snakes and lizards. Whilst I don't know of any area in the country where you can hunt grouse during the summer, it's a good idea to keep these places in mind as you're out and about in the woods throughout the summer. Uh, as I said earlier, grouse tend to spend all of their life in one small area. So if you find a spot that looks particularly grousey uh, and has some of those food elements, 
it'd be good to mark on your map or, or store in your memory. Now in the fall, the grouse will typically eat the same thing they were eating in the summer. And obviously as the fall moves forward towards winter, uh, those resources will lessen. But another big food source for grouse is clover. Um, if you can find an area like I showed you earlier with some clover on the ground, maybe some berries, you're in a super grousey spot. In the winter time at lower elevations, if the grouse can find it, they'll still eat little insects and plants and things. But as it gets colder and snow moves in, the grouse's diet will often move to uh, buds off of trees, particularly buds off alder and aspen trees. So if you're out during the winter and you're not seeing grouse, maybe try and locate some of those deciduous trees uh, where the grouse have a little bit better food source. Another trick you can do if you do happen to get yourself a grouse is to cut their stomach open and see what they're eating uh, each time of year and that way you can kind of have an idea what food source they rely on in your area and you can go back to those types of areas to find more grouse all right i got three bonus tips for you guys bonus tip number one is just anecdotal from my observations and experience so you can take it with a grain of salt if you want bonus tip number one is other little birds so when you're driving around on these old logging roads a lot of times um, a lot of little birds, robins and things will constantly be flying off the road. If you're seeing a ton of birds flying off the road, that might be an indication that uh, it's a good day for birds to be out. Uh, just from my observation, when I'm seeing a ton of those little birds, I'll also often see more grouse. If, I, if I'm seeing none of those little birds, I'll see less grouse. Bonus tip number two. So when you are driving or walking down an old logging road looking for grouse, a big mistake people make is they're looking right on the road. So whilst you will sometimes find grouse right on the road, they're much more frequently uh, right off to the side of the road, just in some of the underbrush or in the ditch or you know just five feet off the road so that they're much more hidden and they can also dart off into the understory a lot easier. So when you're walking or driving down the road, make sure you're scanning all the way to the tree line and not just looking right at the road. And bonus tip number three, when you are out grouse hunting and you cover an area, so you walk say a mile down the road, by the time you walk back up the road it may have been an hour since you covered that area grouse aren't particularly smart in fact they're kind of dumb so this wouldn't work if you were just there a minute ago but if you walked way down the road and it's been an hour since you were back in this area of the road keep your eyes peeled because those grouse will be out they think you just walked by and that you're gone this has happened to me many times where i'm like oh i already hunted this la di da la di da and then uh when i'm on my way back to the car i'll flush a grouse and every time just like i knew better well i hope you guys found some of that information useful and that you get to get out and put it to use and get some grouse this season for uh, lunch or dinner or whatever you're into. Keep this type of environment in mind when you're out grouse hunting. And thanks for watching, everybody. We'll catch you on the next one.